Hi, it's Nathan from Serious Geeks, and today we're going to have a little tactical discussion based on the new reveals from the Games Workshop Warhammer community site. Today and yesterday, there were a lot of reveals. Now, the reveals yesterday were regarding match play and points values. Points values for all armies are going to be going up on the whole, with a couple of examples being Chaos Cultists going up to 6 points and Intercessors going up to 20 points. And that means games are going to be slightly smaller. I mean, everyone's going to mostly play 2,000 points, but your 2,000 points game will consist of less models, which I think is probably a positive thing. And the reason I say it's a positive thing is because it can be a lot more granular in that you can actually have a difference between an Orc Boy, a Chaos Cultist, and an Imperial Guardsman that is more than one point. You can have a two-point difference either way. You know, Orc Boys can now be 12 points a model. A Guardsman could be eight points a model, Cultist six, and there's a genuine difference between the quality of those troops. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that, to make a more gran granular, modular game. The other aspect that was discussed yesterday was the missions, and... A lot of controversy for online, a lot of people aren't quite familiar with the ITC format, but that is basically a tournament format that uses a slew of different rules that were custom built. Included in those are secondary objectives that are added to each game. Now Games Workshop have added secondary objectives to their game. They have not called it the ITC format, they've just called it secondary objectives. However, I think that's a great thing. I, I, I actually think we've always had the secondary objectives, we've always had them. Um, there was Warlord, you know, you slay the Warlord, Line Breaker, get a unit into someone's objective zone, and then there was First Strike and First Blood before that, where the first person to kill any enemy unit got the only victory point for that. And now, it looks like we've got a more expanded system where we can choose our secondary objective. Likely there'll be three secondary objectives to choose from and you will have four sections to choose them from and they will have different aspects. A couple seem to be related to killing units and killing individual models uh, respectively and a couple seem to be a bit more traditional like objective holding etc. This I think is a good move and a welcome change because we're going to need our games to be a lot fairer. We're going to need our games to be more balanced. You don't want to stand up against an Imperial, gun, Imperial Guard gun line, an Astra Militarum one, and get shot off the board because they've got kill objectives and they can wipe you out. Now they have to choose, if they have three objectives, one at least that isn't a kill objective. And you can choose different objectives that can enable you to score. And remember, terrain is now obscuring for the most part, which means they won't be able to just shoot you easily anyway. And you can outflank to get to them. So the game is going to be a lot more dynamic and a lot more flexible and tactical because of these changes, and I'm really happy for it. Moving on for today, we get some information on command points. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to be able to take my army based on what I want to take on the tabletop, not what I have to take just to be able to play the game with any form of competitive play, such as deliberately taking two battalions with HQs that I, I don't really want, or troops choices I don't really want just because I need to have enough command points well now as you can see on the, the screen now we can take a lot more of what we want on the table and regardless you start off with the same amount of command points it looks to me like most people will be playing strike forces but there's obviously avenues for other games there what with combat patrol incursion and onslaught but for the most people they'll be playing 1500 to 2000 point games so most people will start with 12 command points, and that is a very healthy amount to start with, especially when you move on to this. The command phase, which is at the beginning of everyone's turn, is a phase where people are going to generate a command point every turn. Now, I don't know about you, but that is incredibly good for me. My army would love to be able to have 17 command points in the course of a game. I'm unlikely to take any more than one battalion anyway, so yeah, this, this is a very healthy change for me. I'm actually going up in command points and I'm just getting excited of all the things I can do with it. I can take those extra relics for the combinations I want. My vengeance captain, who will have a paragon of war and he would also have a relic. So he costs two CPs anyway. Of course, this will mean a lot of people's armies may have to change and that can be upsetting because we've all invested in this hobby, time and money. So we want to see want to see some positive results with the units we love 
But I don't think when you look at it deeply, it's really going to affect many people at all, really, apart from the fringe people who played competitively and did so deliberately. Now, if you look, most people, you know, if you were to take, say, two battalions, you can fit most of that into one battalion anyway. I mean, you might lose an HQ choice. And some armies do have a lot of HQ choices. And, you know, obviously, then you'll have to pay an extra command point to get another detachment in. But then, you know, you're not really losing out much. You're only losing out one or two command points. And when you're getting 17 over the course of a game, that's not really going to hurt that much. And I really think on that basis that it's nothing to get too worried about. I think Games Workshop have got our backs here. The army list we want to build can still be built. We still have a lot of fun. And if anything, if you're a competitive player, I think you can build a competitive army list without the constraints of having to worry about command points. So I think it helps everyone equally, if I'm honest. Day one, there could be some cases that are not well thought out and may have slipped through the net. I mean, one example as an Ultramarines player is Gilliman. He provides three extra command points if he's the Warlord. However, if you take him as the Warlord in a Supreme Command Detachment as per 8th, you will have to pay three command points, as you can see on the screen, for a detachment such as a battalion. So you actually lose the benefit. So it ends up, he gives you a net benefit of zero command points for his special ability. I mean, that, that needs changing, it needs looking at, but I, I don't mind. If that slips through the net, a quick FA cube will fix that. If not, it's not the end of the world because there's so many command points flying around. I don't think it will matter. It would be funny though, wouldn't it? That Abaddon and Kalgar both give you plus two to your command points if taken in a battalion and they're the warlord. And yet <laughs> Gilliman would give you zero, a net, a net grain of zero over those two. So he actually wouldn't be as good a leader as those two on the table, which it would be entertaining for many, including myself. So, what are we going to spend these command points on anyway? Well, as well as all the usual traditional stratagems that are in our books, some new core ones that we're going to see in the actual rule book themselves that everyone can use. The utility may vary. I mean, if you're a small elite army, you may not want to use cut them down because it may not do much much work for you. You know, relying on sixes is never a good ploy if you've only got a handful of dice. However, it means that if you do get tagged by a large unit and you try and flee that unit in the ensuing turn, you will find that you're going to suffer a load of mortal wounds. So the risk of that is actually a nice little tactical challenge for us to balance. We don't know the details of the other ones yet. Stu Black did confirm that there are five, he believes. He wasn't able to immediately come to the number, but he said there would be five in the core rulebook, and I'm sure there'll be more added to as the game goes on and progresses. Ultimately, these sort of things, they add more utility to our toolkit, so to speak. We give us more options on the table, so we're not just stuck, you know, struggling to get around a rule or whatever. We've actually got, we've got some options, and that makes a big difference when you're playing a game and trying to enjoy it, because both players have to be part of it. If you're if you're just on the receiving end of punishment in a game of Warhammer 40,000, and I'm sure many of us have been in the past, I know I have, it's not fun. You know, just people throwing dice at you and you picking up your models. It's no good. And being able to do lots more on the table is exactly what they're aiming for. And for us to enjoy a game, I, I'm all for it. I mean, more stratagems, more command points. Yep, give me lots of options, lots of reasons to take units that I do love and enjoy. I've got the Obscuring tag on terrain, which enables me to take units that are a bit more risky, a bit more vulnerable to getting killed and wiped off the table. My Centurions, I, I usually take three Centurions and they're very powerful, but they're also a little bit risky because you know people just aim at them and that's 210 points down the drain, although we all know they'll be going up. But you know, it's there's a lot of options now. I can take units and not worry as much. And I've got options if someone charges into close combat, I can I can you know, I can take them on or if they try and flee when I charge them with my Vanguard veterans, you know, I can inflict mortal wounds on them. And yeah, these sort of things, they're, they're going to help the game tremendously. So I'm, I'm very happy to see it. And I think a lot of people, once the dust settles, a lot of people will be too. Ninth edition is shaping up to be an incredibly looking game built on the hard work of 8th edition, which has kind of been like a blank canvas. So they've used that as a blank canvas to be able to 
see you know set the stall out so to speak this is our game and then people have given feedback and they've listened to the feedback and that that takes a lot of guts from games workshop and i think they should be applauded for that because a lot of people are quick to criticize but they've been producing games and models we've loved for years and they're actually listening to the community a lot and yeah that could only be a good thing and the game is going to be excellent anyway that's it for me i could go on about this and ramble for days but we'll see what the next reveal is going to be on the Warhammer Daily tomorrow. And I'll be back with more news as and when I get it. Comment below on anything that you want to talk about and we'll have a discussion. If not, like and subscribe and I'll catch you all soon. Peace out.